So the first thing that we look at uh, would be so-called downhill diffusion. What we are looking at is a so-called binary phase diagram, left side pure A, right side pure B. Above this so-called liquidus line, we have uniform liquid phase. Below this solidus line, we have the uniform solid solution. Solid solution is kind of a uniform single phase between A and B with certain lattice structure, right? And it's indistinguishable. A and B are randomly mixed together. And between these two single phase, that's our so-called uh, two phase region. Right. And we said, OK, let's pick two pieces of material from within the phase diagram. We pick a temperature of T1, piece 1 and piece 2. Piece 1 is richer in A because piece 1 is closer to A side, which is pure A. And piece 2 is closer to B side, which we said piece 2 would be B rich. OK. And then when we put these two pieces together, initially we have distinct different composition. We have a distinct interface. And then let's say we do it at not too low temperature of T1, getting closer to the solidus line, which means the diffusion can happen relatively fast. Based on the phase diagram, eventually it should become a single uniform phase right based on phase diagram because we we are in the single phase region under equilibrium condition the lowest energy condition it will be should be single phase which means two pieces come to one piece okay and then the direction of diffusion oh by kind of like uh, people observation and even common sense piece one richer in a and if we are looking at uh, the species A, our element A, naturally going from, we said downhill diffusion, going from the piece that is richer in A, going towards the piece that is leaner or more deficient in A. Okay? Because what we said, X A1, that means the fraction, atom fraction of A in piece 1 is greater than a in piece 2, of course, for downhill diffusion from 1 to 2, or if I illustrate them from 1 to 2 for species A or element A. That's what we call downhill diffusion. And then similarly, we can observe this for element B or the other species. Okay, And uh, for B, because x b2, which is for the piece 2, x b means for element b we are considering, it's richer for piece 2, richer for piece 2, for b, it's greater than in 1, and of course the diffusion would from high concentration of b, which is in 2, back to low concentration, which is in 1, okay? And the arrow goes backward. Make sense? This is what we said uh, downhill diffusion from high concentration to low concentration. And uh, we said, OK, any process is driven from energy point of view, from thermodynamics point of view, that would be so-called a driving force, right? From system level, from system level, from what you learn in thermodynamics, is the change in free energy, the lowering of the Gibbs free energy or the reduction in Gibbs free energy that drives the process. And from what you learn in thermodynamics, we kind of roughly plot it here. We plot Gibbs free energy for the system, for a system from composition A, pure, to composition B, pure, and typical the typical curve at something at this T temperature below the solidus line looks something like this, quite often something like this. And our piece 1 corresponds to the molar Gibbs free energy of G1. Our piece 2 corresponds to the molar Gibbs free energy of G2. And because initially we have piece 1 and piece 2 together, our system Gibbs free energy would be just a 
a linear combination between one side, piece one, and the other side, piece one. Where the system reside exactly depends on the relative amount of initial piece one versus initial piece two. If initially I'm almost all piece one, very small piece of piece two, I'm, my system free energy should lie which which point? Roughly here, closer to one, right? On the other hand, if I'm largely piece two, very little piece one at the beginning, I should initially lie here. But as what we draw, roughly 50-50, whereas our initial system gives free energy, kind of the arithmetic mean between the two, right? That's what so-called initial gives free energy. And uh, as we said, okay, when the system reaches equilibrium, when the system reaches equilibrium, the system free energy should follow the this blue curve, right? That tells us equilibrium. Should follow the blue curve. It end up to be here, okay? So from initial state to the final state, you would observe the initial Gibbs free energy, which is here, is higher than the final Gibbs free energy. And this process is so-called uh, reduction in Gibbs free energy. All the free energy change is so-called uh, negative, and this process would naturally happen, so-called spontaneous process, right? That's at a system level. And then when we um, Think of this problem a little bit deeper and in thinking of, okay, what drives the individual motion of element A and element B, and that's so-called at component level. At each component, each element component level, we quite often have to think of mu. What does mu mean? So-called chemical potential, the partial molar gives free energy for sub I. Sub I means either component A, all component B. And how do we determine from your chemical physics or physical chemistry, how do we determine so-called chemical potential? From the Gibbs free energy curve, graphically, it's the tangent, and not just the tangent, the tangent extend. Extend to pure A side, that gives us the chemical potential for element A in, for one point, piece one, and the other end would be the chemical potential for element B, because extended all the way to pure B, but in which piece? One piece. These two values determine the chemical potential for A and B in piece one. Similarly, we can do the, the other tangent, and we can get the chemical potential for still element A, but now in piece two, and the chemical potential for element B in piece two. We got this. Now thinking from chemical potential point of view, for the same element, what drives the motion of element? Now thinking from a chemical potential for chem element A, in which piece is higher in chemical potential? Of course from one, right? Mu one A is higher than mu two A. So naturally, Mu 1a is higher than mu 2a. Naturally, going from high chemical potential to low chemical potential. From high chemical potential to low chemical potential. Okay? On the other hand, when we consider element B, when we consider element B, now which piece initially has higher chemical potential for B? It's actually piece 2. Piece two, right? Mu two B is higher than mu one B, and as a result, the B element would go from high chemical potential to low chemical potential. Okay, from two, from two to one, and this process is at system level driven by free energy reduction, keep free energy at component level driven by reduction in chemical potential for each of the species. Okay.